Let me bring in my freshly watered party panel. Look at them sprout. So intelligent. It's a reporter for Fox News Headlines 24-7 on Sirius XM. You hear her, you see her, you love her. It's Carly Shimkus, <laughs> joined by comedian, author, and man about Manhattan. It's Jimmy Fela. And uh, the third in our great stool of goodness, it's Republican strategist <laughs> and author of GOP GPS, Evan Siegfried. Uh, welcome, everyone. Hi. We Hi. Great to see you. Here. Great to be seen and had all. Um, so have the people just given up with this margin of the electorate saying that the federal government should provide health care? Well, I think you're seeing a younger segment of the population turn around and say, well, we just want it provided to us and we don't realize that there are costs associated with it, like it would raise taxes exponentially. Yeah. But at the same time, I think the infighting and bickering on both sides of the aisle is contributing to this, where they just want to have health care and they don't want to see Republicans going and doing an only Republican bill and Democrats going and doing an only Democratic bill like we did in the first place. 65% yeah. of the American people favor Republicans and Democrats coming together and forging a bipartisan solution that fixes Obamacare. Yeah. Only 18% favors Republicans going it alone. Yeah, but it's it's about 70% of the population that doesn't want single payer. Yeah. And and that's that's the only good news here is, is people realize how toxic and horrible single payer coverage they would really it. be. They, they might know someone who's been to the VA. Well, Maybe that's, that's it's changed well, mind. Well, that's what I mean. If you look at the wait times, if you look at the quality of the care at the VA, imagine looking at the VA and saying, oh, you know what they that's need? What you know what they need? 300 million more people to take <laughs> yeah. care of what could possibly go wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the people right. who like singer, pe single payer just don't know anything about it. You know what I mean? Like when I was a kid, I loved 10 CDs for a penny mm -hmm. till I got 10 CDs for a penny yeah. and wound up turning tricks to pay for a Color Me Bad CD <laughs> that cost like $328 because that's the 11th <laughs> one. That's what they don't was tell you. Was there a 10 CD for uh, a penny 10 thing? CDs for a penny was like a Columbia <laughs> House thing. Yeah, but I'm getting off message here. Okay, sorry. But it's ridiculous that if you know about single payer, yeah, you couldn't possibly be for it because it sounds nice. Yes. In theory, it sounds Okay, but it's, this, this Pew right. Research poll is laughable because it also says that uh, a majority of respondents feel the Republicans cut too much money and yeah. they, they don't spend enough. It's, it's No, it's a very strange thing. And uh, government-run health care for all sounds wonderful, but what it also means is no competition and no choice, which means no winners. But I think this poll really speaks to what's going on with this whole health care debate right now because it's so complicated that nobody even really knows exactly what the best course of action is. And we're not just talking about Democrats versus Republicans. We're talking about Republicans versus Republicans. Yeah. So it kind of begs the question, is it better to pass possibly a bad or failing It's a plan? crappy bill. No. Mm -hmm. And, and as, as you point it out it doesn't even lower costs no you need to have a bill that both lowers costs to health coverage mm -hmm. and improves quality of care we have the government having many redundancies in the way it approaches mm -hmm. medicare and medicaid patients yeah. which uh 80 percent of medicare and medicaid pr recipients are in urban areas and when the government says you can't have telemedicine because you live close enough to a doctor that doesn't factor in how many doctors are dropping medicaid yeah. because it only reimburse, uh, reimburses at a rate of 61 cents on the dollar that medicare would reimburse yeah. and that's, that uh, creates more lines fixing. and more stress on the overall yeah healthcare that, system. that is an overregulated government-run system and you compare it to uh buying women 18 dollar mai tais please well, explain well, that because it's one of those things where when you're at a bar yeah you think it might be a good idea like I say this about health care I say yes. people people are for it because they don't know what it costs and like when we're sitting in the bar if me and Evan are like yeah let, you know let's buy Carly and her friends around the Mai Tais we're for it no, until we find out it it's me. until we yeah once we find out it's $18 a drink yeah you know we punt and we go home that sounds like the classic New York City bar the state of Illinois on the verge of a very embarrassing piece of history it could soon become the first state in the nation to have its credit rating reduced to junk status and bankruptcy could also be in the cards. The Republican governor and the Democratic Assembly have been battling over a budget for three years. And if they don't come up with a deal by Friday, some bad stuff is going to go down. Everything from no state money for schools to road work across Illinois grinding to a halt. So who's to blame and can they fix it before it gets worse? This is a very interesting crisis that I lived in California and I've been monitoring in Illinois for about five years now. And so much of it comes down to pensions and underfunded pension obligations. So they owe so much money to these pensions, which gives so much money to Democratic lawmakers, which then write laws favoring the pensions that it has finally bankrupt the state. And now the choice is to raise taxes by about $10 billion. 
I wrote about this in my book, GOP GBS, because the unfunded Glad pensions. Glad you got a plug in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had yeah. to pay him more. Too, baby. But <laughs> I've been sick reads the smooth operator. <laughs> All right, Chardé. <laughs> I think that you have. You have, when you see one party control of states yeah. and cities like Illinois, Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, you have Democrats who are going out and spend, 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 spend. And then when the voters are given the option of having a little bit of short term pain to course correct and preserve the long term integrity and healthiness yep. of the government, they never choose that. And what we're seeing is Governor Bruce Rauner, the Republican, is trying to be the adult in the room saying, we're going to hurt for the next yeah. short term, but we can't survive long term if you t stick with this position. And Democrats. No, they and they need work. to make structural reforms, uh, but they're not going to do it. Nope. It's an indictment of, of whom? Democrats. This is the one thing they never bring up. And yep. if I were a Republican running for anything, this is the ultimate. You know when you're in a fight with somebody and you're trying to make a point where you're like, oh, like that time you thought you could water ski and then you fell all over your face? <laughs> Every time someone <laughs> is arguing for a progressive point, you're like, oh, like the time you thought you could Illinois, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The whole thing went bankrupt. <laughs> like, that's all Republicans should ever point to. That's and they don't. Right. They screw it up. But this is a mess. Last word, Carl. I may be the only person in America that read this and thought it was a good thing. It, extremely selfish, mm -hmm. but my husband actually lives in Illinois, so I can use this as sort of a talking point to get him to move back to New York. Exactly right. Because his tax well said, go Carly. straight through you're the roof. You're not against deep dish pizza. Uh, that would be No, they are. And, well. and property Very taxes, you, you're going to pay more. Yeah. The average resident will pay more in property taxes than they will for their mortgage over a lifetime. $15 billion in debt. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's and they want to raise taxes and just feed the beast. They need to make structural reforms. All right, the party panel returns in just a little. Ivanka Trump, I call her Evita. She is lovely. She's the daughter of the President of the United States. She has an office in the White House and holds the official role of special assistant to the President. She recently sat down for an interview with Fox and Friends and had this to say. You know, I try to stay out of politics. I don't profess to be a political savant, so I leave the politics to other people. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> She's trying to stay out of politics while working for her dad in the White House because he's the president of the United States. He's a politician. Got it. But the woes of being related to a leader is not exclusive to this side of the pond. In fact, England's Prince Harry, he's the ginger lass. He's the grandson of Queen Elizabeth, said he once, quote, wanted out of the royal family. And it may not just be him. In an interview published last week, he informed Newsweek is there any one of the royal family who wants to be king or queen? I don't think so, but we will carry out our duties at the right time. Will Harry and Ivanka run away together and oh. live in a land with no laws? <laughs> Somalia. The party <laughs> panel is back. Carly Shimkus, Jimmy Fela, and Evan Siegfried. Uh, Carly, <laughs> um, I, I understand what Ivanka's saying. I, I, I think she was being very humble in the moment and saying that that she defers some of the bigger political positions to other actors in the white house but she does have an official role yeah. in the white house which is a pretty political place i was really confused by by that quote from ivanka trump um she it, it's got to be really hard not to talk about politics when you're an advisor to the president. Mm -hmm. You moved your yeah. life to Washington, D.C., and you have an office in, and the, White House. in the White House. And yeah. you work in the White House. And you work in the White House. And I also don't really think it's what people want to hear. I mean, she's sort of the president's yang to his yang, yeah. her yang to the yang. She's got that calming, there. soothing mm -hmm. voice. She does. She's got a very lovely persona. She and, helped and the president And she's, by win. all accounts, a she delightful person. And I person. think that a lot of people yeah. want more her to be involved. A good mom. Yep. Uh, Prince Harry. Oh, he's the a, queen yeah. has reportedly told him to lock it up. Yeah. She she said <laughs> less soul bearing in public. Thank you. What a oh, British response. He's he's a, right. Prince Harry's a dope. You know, he's like trying to seem <laughs> relatable. I hate this thing where successful people downplay their success and yeah. their advantage over you. I like Prince Harry. Because he wants to come off as like he a common... He would be the funnest royal. Oh, he's sure. amazing. He'd be like he the greatest Pippa. guy to hang out and, in the world. Yeah, and he's the attractive yeah, one Yeah, also, they, he wants to be king. I mean, that would be the only reason he's thinking about punting is he doesn't want to kill off four people in front of him. But who doesn't want to? <laughs> okay, he's but amazing here's, here's the funny gig. thing. Like, he's, yeah. he's speaking for everyone else. Going, well, no one wants to be king or queen. It's like, no, Harry, that's just what they tell you. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're telling you. Because like, you'll never be killed. No, Harry, this is the worst. You wouldn't want it, man. This is the worst. This is awful. Yeah, I'm trying not to get killed in a polo accident. Yeah. Oh, it was an accident. <laughs> Somebody cut the brakes on my pony. <laughs> Where Will went flying. Evan, you can take Ivanka or Harry for the block. <laughs> 
I would say that Ivanka Trump, yes, she is in the White House. It is absolutely political, but she's not involved in the everyday political knife fights. She's not threatening other members of Congress like Maybe the president's outside group sure. with Dean Heller. And I think she's actually going out and using her position to achieve good, positive legislative results. She's working with Marco Rubio on Capitol Hill to pass paid family leave. That and if they're able to political. give, I was going to yeah, say, that that's like very <laughs> political. <laughs> I, but it's not the in and out of I'm going to call you this oh, or try and get you. Political, it, I'm going to try and get you uh, on elect or get you thrown out of office. Second tier politics. Yeah. Yeah. It, so she's I'm not. 30, she's not a goon. Foot. Yeah, but she's still uh, she's still yeah. a good defensive player. Yeah, I'm not involved in sports betting, but if the bookie walks in, I'm running for my life. It's <laughs> just uh, <laughs> it's, an, it's an exercise regimen. I do. I look like you a sports. Really do. I do look like a sports anchor like who bet the games in the '70s. <laughs> Got fired for betting on games. <laughs> you are you are our Pete Rose, though. I'll take so, it, man. So thank you for that. There's that. Evan, Jimmy, and Carly. Great discussions had by all, especially Jimmy's sport coat.